Speaking of great Sherpas who've been out there on tour for years, our colleague John Wood was on the ground for NBC all week and joins us now from an exotic location in Tampa, Florida. John, what did Ted Scott add to Scotty Scheffler? Because when you look at those results, I guess Scotty was always going to be successful. That was clear. What does Ted Scott bring to that partnership? Ted, Ted's a good friend of mine, but Ted checks all the boxes as a caddy. He, he does a ton of homework. Um, I saw him out there Tuesday night all by himself after Scotty had finished whatever practice he was doing, um, getting some run-out yardages, getting some carry yardages that don't, weren't necessarily in the book. He's a tireless worker. Um, he's a fun guy to be around. He's got great stories, um, and he's been in every situation, and I can't emphasize that enough. He's not going to be, you know, he's not going to shrink from any situation. He's been in Ryder Cups and won majors with Bubba. Um, and so it's not like he's going to be in a situation where he's going to be timid or afraid to say what he needs to say, what he feels his truth is. And uh, I think their personalities clicked right away. And um, it's just it's just been a magical partnership for both of them. John, I'm not going to break any news here. We both know that Scotty Scheffler is really, really good. He's the world number one back to back PGA Tour player of the year. We've seen him win the players before, win a major, have a four win season out of this week. Was there any takeaway where you saw something from Scotty where you went, wow, okay, that's even another wrinkle that I hadn't seen before? Uh, the injury is one thing. I, I think we all know that Scotty's tough. He's not, um, he's not going to back away from any situation physically or mentally, and I think the neck issue showed that. But I just think his continued good putting with that new putter is, is scary, frankly, for a lot of guys. Um, it's, it almost is getting to the point where if Scotty's got his A game, you know, there isn't a there isn't another one who can win right now. He's that good at all aspects. Um, so I think the, the fact that the putting continued, uh, what what he showed as the, the putter got increasingly better and at uh, API at uh, at Bay Hill, it, it got was good all week this week. Um, and the injury is just another thing on top of it. Shows he can get it done multiple different ways, and he's not going to use excuses to uh, slow him down. On the subject of other guys getting worried, John, if you're the number two, Rory McIlroy, or the number four, Wyndham Clark, let's leave out number three in the middle, John Ram, for right now. Are those guys waking up this morning feeling a little bit sobered up that how are they going to elevate their game to compete with a guy who only has to be middle of the pack on the greens to excel? Yeah, I think so. I think there's, um, I don't think it's necessarily going to change the way they've pre been preparing. I think they are probably preparing the best way they know how, uh, but it may add a little resilience to it. it. may add a little bit, I need to do more to catch this guy because right now he is um, obviously the best player in the world. It's not really close right now. So I think when, it, when it's close, you know, and you're getting beat here or there by him and, and beating him a few times, then, you, you, know, you're on, you know, you're on the right path. But I think a lot of guys who are right there with Scotty in that top five, top ten, are looking at it right now going, all right, what, I need to change something about what I'm doing to, uh, to get closer to this guy. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about John Ram this year not being on the PGA Tour. The, the narrative last year was very much Scotty Scheffler, John Ram dominating the first quarter of the year. There was some sentiment early in the week that this is a tournament unlike the majors where the live guys can't and won't be competing. John Ram's not there. Brooks Koepka's not there. Was it diminished by the fact that they weren't there? As good as it was? Not for me. Not for me, it wasn't. Once you get, um, you know, I think the PGA Tour has, still has so many of the top players. Um, and as a whole, when you get those, you know, big fields, you know, it showed. They all came up to the top, all the, all the big guys. You know, you had four out of the top 12, I think, uh, coming down the stretch yesterday. Um, and I'm sure if you're on Liv's side, you're going to say it was diminished. But for my eyes, no. I and mean, nothing could have made that tournament much better than it was. It was just um, you had big names out in front. You had the number one player trailing, playing an incredible round. Um, I, I, I never thought one second about any, anybody from Liv yesterday during that telecast. I, thought, I just thought it was that good. Now, would I have liked to have them there? Yes. I think I, I would love to see everybody playing together again. But I don't think it took anything away from that great championship yesterday. John, you could flip a coin for your takeaway with Xander Shoffley. Once again, he's putting himself in that spot in the final group in a big event, or it's more scar tissue buildup once again coming up short in a big event. The concern level that he hasn't gotten to the finish line in these going forward, do you think that's going to linger with him? 
That's a great question, and I don't think so. And here's why. I watched him yesterday, and other than that one little stretch on 14-15, on, uh, he did everything he needed to do to win that golf tournament. Just the best player in the world did the best player in the world things to beat him. I didn't think Xander lost that yesterday. I, I think he got beat. And uh, the way I just watched Xander all weekend, he didn't look um, – didn't look like he was going to back up. He didn't look like he had any backup in him. He looked like, okay, I know where I am. I know who I am right now, and I'm just going to play my game, and I think it's going to be best to win, and it was darn close. You know, without Scotty doing what, what he did, um, you know, we're in a playoff yesterday. So um, I think it was, you know, he didn't get the win, which is which obviously he dearly wanted, but I think this was a different Xander yesterday, um, and, and I think it's I think he knows – um, he, he's okay in those situations. And that, that was just a, a freak occurrence of the best player in the world. We did see a lot of the best players in the world, a lot of the top-ranked guys show up for work yesterday and, and put on a great show. But was there anyone this week, John, that you were surprised that they were kind of a no-show in the tournament that you expected more from? Yeah, I mean, I think the obvious one would, would be uh, JT. Uh, I think JT has been trending very good, I mean, very upward this, this year. Um, and it's a, of course he, he'd won on, um, and I really felt like his game was peaking at the right time. Um, and, and maybe it still is in a, in a few weeks at Augusta. We'll see. I still think his game is on the upswing. I was a little surprised that, that he didn't play better this week. Um, Max Homa, I kind of had some good thoughts about Max Homa as well. And he got off to that really good start on Thursday and didn't really follow it up after that. But, um, there's always going to be big names who, who don't necessarily have, you know, have the tournaments you think they're going to have. But, um, I would say JT and Max Homa were, were the two for me that stood out. John, where do you rank the finish on Sunday among best PGA tour events we've seen so far this season? I think, I mean, this season, I think it was the best. I mean, you had so many big names with a chance to win with three holes to play. And then, you know, even guys like, you know, Wyndham Clark, who almost felt like he played himself out of it mid round, came back with birdies on 16 and 17 and, and a birdie and a half, let's say on 18. Cause I still don't know how that putt didn't go down. We could still be out there in a playoff, but um, uh, it was the best finish to me. Just, just the fact that who won and who was up there and, and how he did it uh, was just phenomenal. Wyndham Clark looks like it can be a serious problem come major season and looking forward to uh, whenever the third fight is between him and Scotty Scheffler because Scotty got him uh, the first two cracks at it. John Wood, thanks for hopping on with us. Thank you, guys. Enjoyed it as always.